What's going on guys? How we doing out there? Happy Monday to everyone. Another weekend just absolutely flew by. It always seems to be that way, doesn't it? Nah, ah, that's okay. Another week, more work, more the same. What's going on with you guys out there? Anything exciting? Let me know. Tell me something interesting because I'm cooped up here. <laughs> Lucini! You're here to say hi, but maybe uh, back later to waste your time. Busy right now. <laughs> well, thanks for the heads up, man. Go play your board games. I'll be here. <laughs> thanks for stopping in, man. All right. I'll be here. You got you got an hour to come back and take another stab at, at making me stick around a while. Until then, thanks for saying hey. Good to see you. Um, yeah, so uh, I didn't make the headway that I thought I would. Uh, that's always the case, right? I always overestimate, underestimate exactly how long some of the stuff takes. Um, watching a buddy stream right now, and when I'm not there, he gets weird. Is <laughs> implementing everything. <laughs> gotcha. So you gotta like keep careful tabs on him. Got it. Okay. Well, go manage. Go wrangle. No worries. Uh, yeah, I'm just more of the same. You know what I'm doing, right? So same old, same old. So, yeah, go go supervise. All right, man. <laughs> All right, take care. Um, yeah, so if you remember, I finished the animation for the third cutscene uh, on Friday. And it's like, okay, well, great. I'll just drop it in and, you know, I'll be done. <laughs> uh, no. No, I always forget all the little gory details. Um, you have to plug it in, but you also have to make sure all the sound effects are working with it, everything is timed correctly, and all that blah, blah, blah. Uh, so anyway, uh, I did finish it. Uh, tell you what, I'll give you a quick preview of that. Let me go over to the correct scene. So you can see the third cutscene in all its finished glory. Here we go, quick rundown. Wait for it. Ah, uh, look who's here. You are a resilient little piece of fun. But playtime is over. Sir, you should really be careful. That self-destruct sequence initiated. Well, shut it down! Love to comply, sir. But you just toasted the controls for it. <sighs> All hands to escape shuttles. Well, you really KM that one, sir. There you go. So there's our finished product. Um, yeah, like I said, underestimated the crap out of it. Big, big surprise. Uh, <clears throat> little touches here and there that took for forever. Where am I looking here? Scene three, what, oh, bridge scene, and I just got like the bounce over here. Hide that for a second. Just kind of do a quick. Oop, wrong one. There we go. So little things here and there. Uh, obviously, I had to add the the laser uh, effect. Um, time all that. Aim it. Make sure it's all connected. Uh, make sure that the communicator comes up, and then also it has like a little bit of animation to it, so it doesn't just pop on, but kind of slides up, scales up, so it's not as jarring. Uh, had to make sure the gun was attached. Um, had to add all the sound effects, right? That went in sync, and I'd actually tweaked it originally, so the length had shifted, so I had tons of that kind of stuff. But I finally thought, okay, 
things are falling into place now, right? I, I added the triple, I added the animation of the triple, all that kind of stuff. And then I looked at the planet and I realized it dawned on me. It's kind of like, oh, wait a second. At this point, the planet should be totally engulfed in lava. So I had to go back and modify the planet and turn it from that nice green and blue ocean, dreamy little oasis into this little hellscape. So I had to go back and modify that one. So anyways, long story short is that that combined with the other work that I had to do outside of the game pretty much killed the weekend. So that's where I got to. Um, and then one of the things I also remembered was the fact that I have subtitles, right? One of the things I'm doing in this game for the first time is putting subtitles in there. And I was like, oh God, I got to add subtitles to this. And then I went, wait, did I even put subtitles in the second cutscene? And the answer was no, no, I didn't. So, oh, and here you go. There's the difference. There's the uh, pretty blue ocean planet of Core 2 before. And then when we come back, we see that all the lava's risen. If I could undo this again. There you go. And, yep, you see. And it turned out to be a pretty simple thing, too. All I did was basically go into Photoshop, create a mask around the, the water, did a huge shift. Uh, and then on the trees, I just did uh, a little bevel, right, to put that orange kind of haze over the edges. And it sells. I think it works. And then change the, the glow in the background to a nice, terrible, ominous light orange. So not a lot of effort there to get the end result, but it looks pretty good. <clears throat> so anyways, so what I'm going to do, at least for the moment, before I start jumping into uh, the final fourth cutscene is add the uh, subtitles to 2 and 3. And we'll see how that goes. I don't, I'm not going to bother judging the time. I suck at that so bad that I'm not going to bother. But before I do that, I will show you a sneak preview. I have set up the scene. So this is slick. This is, once again, the fantastically talented Daniel Thomas who uh, did the art here. So this is the interior of the escape shuttle. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to have the captain sitting on this side and the number one sitting on this side. And then I have these other chairs in the foreground, so I'll probably have, like, the little security, the red shirts. A couple of red shirts actually made it. <laughs> Get off the ship. And so they'll be in the extreme foreground, uh, you know, just kind of hanging in there. But I, I got this set up initially. So just a subtle touch, but you can just see, you know, that implies that we're in the escape shuttle drifting away from the planet and the ship. Uh, so an interesting side note, everything is nice, clean cut, no jaggy edges because everything's 2D, right? With the exception of the spaceship. The spaceship is a true 3D object and you can see the jaggies. So my contemplation is this, is because the ship's going to move here eventually, but I could get away with the jaggies if I just bake this into an image, right? A 2D image and just stick it on there. So I'll think about that. I'm not sure how I want to go in that, you know, it's kind of getting a little overly anal that I care about the fact that a 3D object has jaggy edges on it. Uh, I could do an anti-alias pass, but then I have to make sure that it's like deactivated on a mobile. So I don't know, just a pain. But anyways, here is a sneak preview of the fourth and final cutscene, Sans characters, but at least got it all set up and just about ready to go. So let me come out of there, maybe, there it goes. All right, so let's bounce over back into here. So my system for doing the, the subtitles, really simple. Uh, I just have a separate uh, empty game object called cutscenes, subtitles, and one script, like so. And the way it works is, <clears throat> excuse me, it gets fired with a call, piece of fuzz there. Uh, and it's just a simple kind of thing where I, I say uh, show subtitle and then I use a string so that way I'm able to sort of simplify the call to it with just a two character thing um, I can't remember I, I guess because I was doing it before I uh, oh because I was doing it through animation calls right uh, animation events where uh, you can do certain things like integers that kind of stuff but you can't do a vector 2 right and originally that's what I wanted was just a an X and a Y value right X for the, the card and a Y value to tell the card where on the screen it should appear, either left, right, or center. Left, right, center, yeah, hey. Um, so what I ended up doing was just doing a, uh, 
a less efficient, but who cares because it's it's a cutscene, so performance is fine anyways, uh, is a string. So it's just a two character string. So the first character represents which bit of text is going to get displayed, and the second one represents where it goes, left, right, or center. So I think I, um, yeah, I just started this. Uh, so it's kind of the text is left over from uh, the very first cutscene text. And then this is the second one. So what I also have to do is find a simple way to get at the audio. I can pull the audio here, but the one annoying thing with uh, Unity is that you can play an audio, but you can't sort of start and stop. You can only play it from the beginning every time. So what would be wiser is if I grab the audio, cutscene audio, audio music, show an explorer, and then just find another thing to play it with. So let me go open with, uh, what the hell, I'll do with the uh, QuickTime player, that should be okay. All right, let's see. The last piece of equipment is now on board, mm, sir. Terrific. All right. Yep, that's how we'll do this. So I'll do that, and then let me bring up my scripts here. Let me rearrange this a little bit. Oh, you know what? Maybe if I just shrink it down like so. Bring it up there. There we go. Terrific. Good riddance to that whole planet. And there you go. So terrific good riddance to that whole planet. And I'll stretch this out so I can scrub a little easier. There we go. So we say terrific. Uh, riddance. <laughs> it's sad how much you get uh, <laughs> used to uh, autocorrect, right? <laughs> so let me let me find a cheap way of doing this. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll do a quasi makeshift. Uh, Spell check here <laughs> so I don't get stupid. Uh, riddance. I mean, I knew it was correct, incorrect, but I just didn't think in my head. There he goes. How to spell it correctly. So I'll leave that nearby so I can stop screwing up. All right. So the last piece of equipment is now on board, sir. Terrific. Good riddance to that whole planet. And then. And the triple's back as well. What? And I'll do the and the tribbles. I thought I capitalized that. Should I capitalize it? Yeah, why not? Why not? The tribbles back as well. Punctuation, put the period in there. And then I remember this. He goes, What? And I'll do a question mark, exclamation point question mark because he's concerned and then I think she says it's back it's back see I'm jumping ahead but I think I'm right here no yes <laughs> all right so let's see if I got this right what it's back no yes no and then lock the ship down. Lock the ship down! There. So, we'll say no. Down. Sir, it's just a triple. Do it! Sir is just a triple, and then he, of course, screams, do it, and we'll do three explanation points, because he's just really pissed. Why not? And then she actually does it. Do it! Security, go floor. Yeah.
Go floor to floor. Go floor to floor until you find and floor until you find and vaporize that little furball. I think that's right. And vaporize that mangy furball. Mangy. That's so much better than what I said. Can't even remember my own dialogue. And did I just misspell that? I probably did. Uh, is it mangy? Or does it mangy not even exist as a true word? Mangy? Hey, there it is. It's not IE, it is Y. Man, I really do suck at spelling. Security, go floor to floor until you find and vaporize that mangy furball. Ball. And we're out, and that's it. So that's a lot less than this guy. All right. So the question mark of how I actually uh, trigger these is kind of a, I mean, there's, it's, Killer Tofu, what up, buddy? Welcome, welcome. So there's uh, a couple different ways I could actually uh, fire off these, but the the easiest way to make sure that I'm perfectly in sync, I could do it with a timer, that kind of stuff, but I think the best way is to let the animation drive it, so that way we know that we're perfectly in sync. Um, I'm doing that even more so now, uh, just because sometimes if you do like the, the audio for a scene, and if it just is attach to a, uh, an audio source object and it plays at start, it can actually get ahead and play before the other stuff is, is really active. So um, my solution is I let the animation actually fire the audio off. So that way I, I know that it's going to be like in sync. And I'm going to do the same thing with the, the dialogue here. So what I'll do here is uh, put the bump. We got what for I know be able to select him. There we go. All right. So, Killer Tofu, what's up, you too, man? How was your weekend? Do anything fun? I worked, and then I worked. But no complaints. Just stating what the what I did, not actually complaining. Still enjoy very much what I do, so no major complaints. Along with the, the freelance job, which, like I said, one of these days, once that thing finishes and it comes out, I look forward to, to filling you in because this one's a fun one. Oh, you did! Congratulations! All near three hours of it. Now, now I can say stuff like, <clears throat> "Well, looks like we're shy horse." No, you brought too too many. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. Enjoy. I just, I, I love the fact that there's a lot, I mean, for the first, like, seven minutes of the movie, it's not a single line of dialogue, right? But total tension, anyways, right? And, not to mention, you have a villain that was a total shocker. If you don't, if you know nothing coming in, when it happens, you're like, wait, what? <laughs> you know? That, and that's how I, I saw the first time I saw the movie. I had no backstory to that whatsoever, and I went in totally fresh. And just thought it was absolutely amazing, you know. And it's just, I mean, it's its such a poignant focus of the, the time, right? Yeah, you're completely blind to it? Yeah, that's the best way to go in that movie. Anyone that gives away spoilers to that one, right? I mean, and I've resisted saying the stuff that I'd love to say about that, right? I, I just, you know, I, I want to so much. But, you know, Jason Robards, absolutely freaking brilliant in that, you know. Just make... Just, you know, pretend like it's nothing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, him and Charles Bronson, just so amazing. Such a great film. But, uh, yeah, glad you saw it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm rambling on about it, but, you know, what did you think? I mean, did you take any inspiration from it? Or, you know, I just, I, I think, uh, yeah, it was definitely some good research for sure. Yeah, uh, maybe a little long for you. I don't know, but... Um, and it's also, I guess I should have prefaced it, I, I guess I should have warned you, because it, it, it was a, a definitive spaghetti western. Uh, 
by that I mean uh, uh, Sergio Leone uh, shot all those spaghetti westerns, you know, in Italy, right? And they frequently shot it um, either with people that didn't speak English, right? Or they would simply just record and then, like, onset dialogue was an afterthought and they would loop the entire movie. So there is that sort of disconnect, right? And once again, I apologize for not mentioning this, but uh, yeah, it's seen by design. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It, it was definitely uh, Leone's, excuse me, his, his magnum opus. It was the, the one that he really just went, I'm just going to do it the way I want, right? You know, as opposed to Good, Bad, the Ugly, uh, Fistful of Dolls, and, and some of those other westerns he was so known for. But, um, but yeah, I mean, so it's one of those things that they go back and they, they loop the, the, the dialogue, right, after they've already shot it, but they never really put that much effort into it, you know. So it does have, to lack of a better term, it has that almost like martial arts kind of kung fu movie, right, where it seems like sometimes the dialogue does not either match close or sometimes it just feels like it's they're saying something totally different which they are sometimes some of the people in that movie probably never spoke a word of english in their life right so they just said whatever and sir uh leone is just like yeah we'll just we'll just dub it no one cares you know which was a lot more permissible back then you know nowadays that's you, you would never see that happen right that's just a total no-no but yep absolutely one of uh Tombstone, really? Okay. And he, my, my <laughs> yeah, my, my wife loves that movie. Um, I you know I think it's a good film, but uh, yeah, she, um, I I thought it was I don't know some of it I thought was a little over the top, but I mean it's good. I mean you put Kurt Russell in a movie and automatically you toss in a couple store uh, stars for it. Just you know, Kurt Russell is just the epitome of cool in Hollywood in my build. You know I just he's just so cool but um yeah it, that was a good one more of a modern take um i'll finish but I, <laughs> you know i guess that is a bad thing right starting out on something such a high mark on that one um but i think i mentioned some other ones uh silverado which i think is available on on uh amazon as well if you've never seen silverado then i'm so jealous of you i would love to watch silverado fresh for the first time it is Silverado is the most perfect like rah-rah uh upbeat version of a Hollywood Western to ever be made right and like I said I talked about before it's just everyone in that movie virtually everyone in the movie is absolutely famous yeah please do yeah if you want one to say okay what happens when Lawrence Kasdan, who is just a brilliant filmmaker and and writer by his own uh, his own abilities, <clears throat> when he looks back on those westerns and he goes, "Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and make my love letter to the western," because his first film, by the way, I don't go on a rant here, but uh, Lawrence Kasdan's first film, Body Heat, still to this day, I think one of the greatest first movies a director's ever had. I mean, like Danny Boyle had uh, a Shallow Grave, which is just profoundly amazingly fantastic right for a first film but i don't know i might have to give it to lawrence kasdan for body heat just and body heat is a a love letter to film noir uh it pulls heavily heavily from uh double indemnity where fred mcmurray who we all loved is you know uh, my three sons that the sweet dad it plays a pretty sinister kind of role in that and so he made body heat is a love letter and to like i said to film noir those black and white murder mystery kind of movies but then he turned around and said okay let me do one that's like a western because he did the uh he did the big chill right lawrence kasdan made his which was basically his love letter to his own uh time period right his own age group but then the studios are like okay you're a god you're amazing what do you want to do next and he goes i want to make a remake of a western you know in a in a classic Hollywood style, and that is Silverado. So absolutely, uh, if you want to see, uh, if you've never seen it, if you if you want to see a fantastic portrayal of what I think it might be more like in the real life, right? A better, more realistic representation than uh, Clint Eastwood Unforgiven. I think might be the his best western uh, outside of the the Leone movies, which are kind of different things. But just for realism, Unforgiven. And, um, <clears throat> oh, oh, 
Oh, come on. Where's my brain? Um, Waterworld. Kevin, Kevin Costner. Uh, he directed a movie called Open Range, which also absolutely amazingly good film. So those are all fantastic westerns in my book, right? For different reasons, too. You know, whereas Unforgiven uh, is a l lot more of a realistic portrayal of, of how the western world is not as dreamy as we think it is. And then Open Range, even more so. Uh, but Silverado is definitely the ultimate love letter to the western. So there you go. Ranting, going on endlessly. Sorry about that, but see... I got to start on movies, man. I can't help it. But like I said, I would love to have a reset button to be able to just... Yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I know for sure because I stumbled across it um, on... I think it was... God, I hope it was Amazon. You know, you can check me if I'm wrong here. But it's Amazon or Hulu, and I'm pretty sure it was Amazon that I saw it on for streaming. Uh, Silverado... Yeah, yes, Silverado is available on uh, Prime. So there you go. Oh, unfortunately, Open Range isn't uh, a Prime. You have to rent that one, which is unfortunate. But <clears throat> I don't know if it's open. Uh, open if it's available somewhere else. But uh, and I'm not. I'm not a big. I, I don't talk about it too much. I'm not a big Kevin Costner fan for the most part. Uh, I think Silverado was by far his best performance he's ever given. But I'm not a fan of most of his movies, with the exception of Open Range. I thought he really blew that one out. I, I thought, yeah. Nope, it's not on Netflix either. So if you want to see Open Range, unfortunately, you're going to have to fork out the $4 to see that one. Uh, or, <clears throat> uh, you know, download it somehow by other means, which I'm not going to suggest, of course. That would be wrong. All right. But uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully you find some good Western stuff in there, and hopefully some of that offers inspiration. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'll take it from here. Okay, that's good. Uh, but yeah, hopefully it serves as inspiration for you uh, for doing something with your VR game. You know, and yeah, if you want someone to try it out, man. If you, uh, I'm not sure. Let's see. Did you even tell me? I know you're saying you're doing the Western VR, but I don't think you told me which format in terms of like, is it going to be? Uh, like PC Steam or Oculus Quest, you know, I mean, because I, once I, I already said at this point, I think Quest is definitely the way to go these days in terms of just your, your user base. I think it's significantly Quest 2. Okay, good. Yeah. That's my, my personal analysis, but I think that's absolutely the, the, the sharpest way to go these days. Excuse me. All right. Talking too much, working too little, right? Uh, I show you a snippet of it. Yeah, yeah, no, please. Absolutely. Fire it my way, man. Cut scene script. Yep. Yeah, I well, YouTube. I never heard of that. Is that a safe, okay site? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Toss me a link. There we go. One sec. I shall share it. It's interesting. It has a uh, one three three aspect ratio, I guess, because it's it's a one eye thing. Is that it's recording just the one eye? Uh, should I get audio? I don't know if you. Let's see. Nice. <laughs> nice. From the uh, built-in quest recording. Got it. Nice. Oh, yeah, and you, you have, <laughs> I recognize that picture way too well. Okay, so once upon a time, Wes, oh, nice, ragdoll there. The, uh, I recognize the uh, Fonda picture there. Yeah, of course not. No, I mean, dude, you're still in, you're still developing. That looks great, even for early development. Uh, I'll, you know what? That reminds me, though. I got to show you this. This is a game from the 80s in the arcade that I played way too much that you might want to look at. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, of course, appreciate that. Absolutely. So Bank Panic. 
Uh, this was a game that I played uh, a million years ago, and it was great because it had a joystick. I'll dial the volume down a little bit, but you might want to look at this as inspiration. Joystick and three buttons for the three doors, left, right, and center, right? And the way it works is people walk up to the bank, and you can see here, see how they're walking up. You see the little red symbols, right? And you have to open up the doors, and you don't know if it's going to be good people dropping off money. Like here, see? You see the exclamation point to let you know that, uh oh, that's a bad guy, and you have to shoot him. So you have to take the money, bad guy, and then good guy. So you have to be really quick on the draw, pay attention, and look for, do they have a money bag, or do they have, like, the exclamation points? Like that, see? And then sometimes, to make it even more of a challenge, here, let's see. Okay, she drops it off. Sometimes you see a person like that show up. Oh, and then see a, that little five on the back there? That was, like, a, a little foreshadowing to let you know that uh, if you go to door five, there's going to be a, uh, yeah, there's going to be a bad guy there. And then sometimes you'll see a person drop off the money, but then a bad guy will push him out of the way, right, and then shoot him. So you have to be ready for all that. There you go. And you have to get it so you've pulled in money from all the different stalls, right? So just in terms of timing and that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, you want to add bystanders? Yeah, yeah, you have to, man. That's that's what Westerns are all about, right? Especially in a kind of bar scene like that. But anyways, I don't know. Uh, 1884. God, I'm dating myself. Um, love the hell out of this game. That was such a fun game back in the 80s. Uh, if you looked at the games that came out around that time frame, this one was so much better in a lot of ways. So, anyways, Bank Panic. I don't know if... Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I enjoy it, man. I, I, I apologize to anyone that was coming here looking for me to actually do something, but uh, I, I have no qualms with jumping off and getting sidetracked. So, apologies to anyone that's actually hanging out with me. Yeah, yeah, no, dude, I love it, man. It's, it looks like a fantastic start. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you could have different environments. You, you start off with a, a much more easier kind of thing, but then... And it's funny because that, uh, that scene in the bar uh, has some kind of correlations to uh, uh, Eastwood's uh, Unforgiven movie, too, I think. But you'll see if you get around to seeing that one as well. But yeah, congrats, man. Keep going for sure. And the, yeah, I like the one character. Uh, obviously, most of them were, were 2D cutouts as placeholders. But yeah, you had the one guy that uh, looked fine, right? Looks really good in the, the nice ragdoll when you shot him. Was that something that... W was that like a true ragdoll or was that a uh, like a, a pre-done animation? Just curious. Cutscenes. So I'm going to drop this in here. Boom. Good. So now I should be able... Oh, it's Maximo. Sweet. Okay. There you go. That makes total sense. Why not, man? That's always something where uh, when people hear that I'm an animator, they'll say, oh, could you do this animation for me? Not at the budget you're thinking. And then I'll say, have you ever heard of the website Maximo? And I'll, I'll send them over there uh, frequently because, I mean, you get some fantastic animation, right? for prices that I could never match because I'm making my stuff from scratch. So, smart choice. So, yep. So, what, you think, like, maybe by next week we'll be done with the whole game? Sorry. <laughs> Says the guy that's spending two years plus <laughs> on his latest game. <laughs> oh, yeah, cool, okay. Yeah, just as, as what are the, what's the term? Uh, gray box? Uh, gray box when you're putting in the, the placeholder kind of stuff? Awesome. Cool. Yep. All right. So let's do this. So I come into animation. Now here. Uh -oh, why is she not? Oh, because it's him. Um, so I need to hear. Let's see. I don't want to do this. Uh, I, I guess I switched to her because she's speaking first. So I can say. So she starts speaking right here, and that's about frame 19. And just for simplicity's sake, I'll leave it all with him. So I'll jump to frame 19. And I'll mute the audio for my checking here, but then I'll add... Um, oh yeah, there we go. I'll add a, an event here, and we'll say 
Um, is missing. Did I not save? Or did I not make it public? Oh shoot. Okay. Um. Okay. Sorry to do it this way. I wasn't thinking. Do a public void. Uh. Show. Subtitle. <clears throat> and. String. Uh. The card. I'll just call it that. What the heck? So that should get me where I need to be. So let that build. Now if I click on this again, I should have that as an option. And not only that, but uh, it should give a string. There we go. So this first one, it would be, um, let's see. Oh, do I even have those? Yes, I do. OK, good. So I didn't have to jump away, but oh well. Show subtitles. So this would be uh, be the very first one, and it would be <clears throat> uh, is it one? I don't even know how I did my own script here. Uh, oh, left, right, center. God, that makes sense. Duh. One. Okay. So, so one right. So just with that, if we hit play, I should get the title popping up here. And it didn't. Well, that sucks. Okay, what the hell? What did I break? Oh, <laughs> because I didn't actually do anything with it. Oh, God, I suck at this, man. Why in the hell do I do this? I'm an idiot. Okay, cutscene script. And then the function. Oh, uh, what the hell's the function? Show subtitle. Duh. <laughs> okay, and then here I just pass on the value that we got. There, that should do it. All right, let's try that again. Oh, I'm still playing. It's gonna get pissy here. Let's wait for it to finish and try this again. So now we should see her. Whoops. Oh, God, I really do suck at this. And I, I never, did I never, t no, let's see. Captain. No, I did attach it. Okay, what was it complaining about then? Out of range. Within the string. What? Let's see, it should be. That's not right. Come on, let me select it, jerk. What the hell? There it goes. God, that was a pain. One R. Okay, so who is the culprit here? Let's go. Put that in there, and I also put one over here. So over here, I call it the subtitle, which actually makes more sense. I'm going to borrow that instead of the card. Good, good. All right. So at least I should get a debug tossed up to figure out where it's actually crapping out. <clears throat> I thought it was going to be so simple, too. Turn off the maximize. You don't need this full screen. All right, so I should get at least one. The card here, the card here. Oh, okay. Hmm. 
uh, one. Okay. So one. Oh, because there's two characters. God. I don't even look at my own code. I swear to God. Somebody hurry up and fire me. Get someone in here and knows what the hell they're doing. So it's two characters. It's not just one. It's zero one. So that accommodated the fact that I could have up to 99 stupid uh, <laughs> cards in there. Okay. God. Okay. So now, having re redispatched, and it's still not coming up. Excuse me. Okay. So it did there. And now I'm just getting pissed. Go, oops. Go like this. Figure out where the breakdown's occurring if it's there. Oh, unless subtitles are off, which they shouldn't be. They should be on. Oh, I can find out by moving this down. That's the simplest way to find out. Grab this guy. And then that should be right. Space that out. Like so. Oh, God. I'm still not reading my own code. I'm doing it backwards, that's why. Okay, I finally actually read the code that I wrote. <laughs> and I'm actually halfway paying attention. So I, I, I screw that up like three different ways. Number one, the number needs to be two characters because you could have like tons of different uh, iterations. And then you also have to dictate if it's left, right, or center. And of course, I did it backwards. It's the wrong order. I was doing number and then position. It's position and then number. So let's come back into animation. One last time. So we can finally, having re redispatched the monster after 10 minutes of tinkering, there it is. And then he would go blimp, blimp, blimp. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, me too. Daily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, what's even worse, too, is like if I go back and look at... If I try and update one of the games I made, you know, a decade ago in Unity, when I, I knew even less, which I know that's hard to believe, but true. Um, <laughs> yeah, and look at that and kind of go, really, seriously? What were you thinking? Every now and then, I'll hit a piece of code, and I go, you know what? I must have stolen that one from someone because there's no way I could have come up with that back in the day. All right, so then he's starting there. So this would be here, <clears throat> show subtitle, and this would be left, and it would be subtitle number two. And I'll check this one as well, and if this works, then I'm off to the races. And I'll just go through all of these. There you go. All right, now we're good. Cool. <clears throat> All right, so let me find where she says, and the trouble's back as well. Right here. And we'll start it right there. Go a couple frames in. So 179. So let's go to. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like so. And then we'll send out show subtitle. And this would be right. And this would be the third one. Okay. And then easy because it's him. So we can keep going here. What? 
Yeah, I can actually read his lips there. Even in a 2D character, I can still kind of tell. But then I, I know this dialogue, right? So I guess that's not saying much. All right, so this would be left, and this is 04, I think. Let me double check that. Yeah, 04. And then she says, it's back. So come back over here. And the back as well. It's back. Like so. So that's uh, 276. I may have to space this out. This may be a little too close together, so it may whip by too fast. But I won't know until I actually get it all together. And this would be number five, and this would be to the right. I have a center one, but for this one, I won't use the center at all. It's back. No. Left. Six. Here, so that is 307. So we'll come back over here to him since he's driving this whole thing. So then. Yes, which is 07. So we go right 07. That should get that. Okay. I guess I could check the progress here. Right, save that and we'll just go through here real quick. Riffic. Good riddance to Whoops. that whole planet. Oh. Yeah, so this was talking about where like the sink can get off. So if I hit pause, let it boot up, because it does this little that. The Anima two day two D thing always like stalls it and throws stuff out of sync sometimes. The last piece of equipment is now on board, sir. Terrific. Good riddance to that whole planet. And the triple's back as well. What? It's back. No. Yes. No! Yeah. That's working. All right. Let's see. I think I put in right here. You can stack uh, animation animation events on top of each other on the same keyframe, but it just gets so cluttered that if I can avoid that, I will. All right, so 08. So be left 08. Like so. No. Put it right here, lock the ship down. Should be nine, correct? Oh no, that's all the same. Oops. Okay, so he says no. Lock the ship down. And then she says, Sir, it's just a tribble. Yeah, right here. So, 419. About there. And that's 09. And then be to the right. Yeah, 
Mm. I may actually come back. Oh, no, if I do that, I should probably do that now. Space it out. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that because there's a beat between him saying no and lock the ship down. So here's what I'm going to do. Go ahead, duplicate that. Nine. And move this up. Twelve. Like this. There. So your characters are basically a bunch of planes with the individual uh, components. Yep. Uh, here you go. <laughs> So you see how they're all stretched out. You know, they're they're all in like different Z depths. And that's nothing to do with Unity. That's because Maya absolutely sucks at handling Z depth issues with any kind of alpha textured items. So I did that to try and make the Maya animation go a little bit better. But yeah. I mean you can see how <laughs> how brutally dismembered he is. And uh yeah, just joints that control each section. You know, just uh, with uh, some weighted stuff. So, the like, you can see how the chest here has a bend to it. So, there's two different joints that control the chest. Uh, the the mouth actually has a couple different points. Like, I think three that allow me to get better rotation. But, yep, that's the approach. Let's see. Okay, so, let me come back here. So, no. I'm just going to say lock the ship down. Planes. No, I, I knew exactly what you're saying, so don't sweat it. You see, my my spelling skills are not that solid anyways. Uh, a cool way to do that. It, it's, yeah, it's, you know, I, I mentioned before, but, you know, when I started a couple of years ago, a spline, a spine was not at a point in development that I was comfortable jumping on that ship. Uh, you know, but if I start over, uh, I don't know the next time I'm going to be doing a 2D game. I'm going to go back to 3D at least for the next one. But uh, I would definitely use spine in the future. Okay, so it's going to right, happen right here. He's going to say lock the ship down. Yeah, Hollow Knight. Yeah. Yeah, there's a ton of, of games that come at this uh, with the, the 2D approach. And yeah, I, I get that. I mean, there's lots of pluses uh, to doing this, especially if you uh, use some of the newer tools that Unity, if you're doing in Unity, Unity offers for like 2D lighting and stuff like that, right? There's a ton of stuff. But because mine was a little more simplistic, uh, I didn't go that route. You know, you can make normal maps so it can work with the lighting where it can have shading, like, you know, like make it look like it's a 3D object. I didn't take it that far for a couple different reasons, but um, yeah, you can see the, the armrest going through his leg, but I actually threw code. I make the armrest disappear after he moves his leg off of it in the beginning. So right here, it looks like ass, but when I actually play it, it'll play correctly. <clears throat> All right. So this would be left, and this is lock the ship down, which is 09. Whoops. Left 09, like so. All right, and I should have show subtitle. Good. And now this one is going to be right. Now this is going to be 10. And then he screams, do it. <laughs> he just goes in a total rant here. He's in psycho mode. So it's fun that I, when I originally created the characters, I just I like the idea of the inept captain and the the number one who just sort of puts up with it for whatever reason. And that's the way I had in my head that he's a bumbling f buffoon. But she still tolerates it. But it was the the performance that she, the the voice actors did for this that added such a, a great component to it that it really every time she says something it seems like the whole time is she's just completely gutting him right belittling him and it just it adds such a really nice subtle touch to it that just brings a lot to it. 
He says do it. Um, oh, you know what? Actually, that's do it. And then, yeah, that's her last line. So I'm going to borrow that one. Like she's just waiting for him to blow himself up so she can take him. Exactly. You know, just waiting for that moment that she could just kind of go, you know what? Don't know what happened. He just screwed up. He got eaten by the plant or whatever. <laughs> and now I'm going to take over now. But yeah, you you kind of get the feeling that the only reason he's there is is pure and old fashioned nepotism. Or I don't know, maybe like in the back of my head, I'm thinking that she's doing it because she's making mental notes all this, and she's gonna write and make a, a movie out of this, right? Like a comedy or something. All right, so then right, uh, no, this is left. Eleven. Twelve. All right, and then I'm gonna add one more. That just gets rid of the title after it's done because we're gonna start to go in the fade out there. So I'll add 13, which is just gonna be an empty bracket like so. So it just erases it. Just a simple way of doing that. Okay, I'm on. Yeah. Just to make sure I didn't hit two of those by accident. Okay. And it doesn't matter which side, but I'll just keep it with that one. And it's 13, correct? Yes. All right. Let's see what we got. Let's see if the titles are working here the last piece of equipment mm. is now on board sir Shit, I forgot Rick. anima 2d is totally hosing me there's a doggy outside my door she knows it's three o'clock it's freaky how she can tell time all right so now we're all good here we go let's see the last piece of equipment is now on board sir terrific good riddance to that whole planet and the triples back as well what it's back. No. Yes. No! Lock the ship down! Sir, it's just a triple. Do it! Nope. Oh. Security, go floor to floor until you find and vaporize that mangy furball. We're missing one. What happened to do it? What the hell? Well, it's close. It was almost perfect. Ten. Okay, and it should happen right there. Okay, I don't know how I lost it, but I did. So that'd be left 11 for do it. So, yeah, my little simple system for doing the uh, subtitles. Um, obviously, uh, once I get uh, localization set up, I'll have to revamp this a bit to accommodate switching out the different languages and that kind of stuff but I'll worry about that later so let's see if I got that correct if so then we can move on to scene three the last piece of equipment oh, is God. now on board I'm sir. getting that pause wait for anima 2d to do its thing which I have no idea why it does that with the atlas stuff it has to do it every time and there's literally no anima 2d stuff in this but anyway I digress here we go. The last piece of equipment is now on board, sir. Terrific. Good riddance to that whole planet. And the Tribble's back as well. What? It's back. No. Yes. No! Lock the ship down! Sir, it's just a Tribble. Do it! Security, go floor to floor until you find and vaporize that mangy furball. Oh, okay. I saw one thing there. It looks like this armrest is not disappearing like it's supposed to. Por qué? So that's the captain's responsibility to make that go away. Uh, left armrest. Why do I do that? Why don't I just hide it? Oh, I know why. Because... Yeah, because he puts his hand on there later. Okay, so 
I'll do that and then I'll so the idea is originally is his leg drapes over the armrest and then I don't I don't hide it there because he brings his hand up and he he puts his fingers over it. And I want some of the fingers to actually overlap and some of the fingers to go behind it. And that's why I change the armrest sorting layer to 10. But then at a certain point, I need to make it just go the hell away. So let me do that. Public <laughs> void. And I'll just say hide left. Like so. And we'll say set active. Whoa, no. Set active. Wait. Oh, because I have it to the I have it tied to its its texture. So let me go game object. I cannot type. Finally. There. Set it to false. There. Cool. Alright, so now. Come back here. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about. You can see right here, if I zoom in. Uh, oh, I can't do that. I forgot. Stupid. If you zoom in, you actually lose your position there. Do this way. So here is good because this part of the leg is on top. This part of the leg is behind it. So it looks like it's actually draped over it. But then when he puts his hand here, I want the thumb to be in front of the armrest, right? And you see it's behind. So that's when I do that layer uh, order change. And then here, as soon as he starts doing this is when I can hide it. So I'll just, I'll go ahead and toss it in here. This should be fine. So, hide left armrest. There. All right, I'll mute it. No reason to listen to the audio yet again, but I just wanna make sure that that armrest is actually getting hidden away. All right, so here you can see it's in between. There, now see the just the front fingers are on top. The ones behind it will go behind like that. And now I've totally turned it off. So really, subtle sleight of hand kind of stuff like that. It's kind of cool that you, d you don't think about it, right? You just take it for granted, but then there's actually some fun stuff going on in the background to make it look seamless. You know, the fact that there's a separate object here, right? Uh, if I can select it, yeah, there you go. The fact that there's that little arm piece there, just duplicated, yeah. Complicated just to make it look simple. All right, so. That's it. Three is good. Uh, so I'm going to borrow this and we're going to go into our third cutscene. And toss this in here, maybe. Oh, I can't do it that way. I can't copy paste. I forgot about that. So let's just duplicate. I'm just going to scream because it doesn't like the naming. I don't care. Fix that in a second. three subtitles all right and let's see what do we need to do here uh, okay so we're done here so I'm gonna put this back to where we should be and actually let's go through the whole thing start from the beginning make sure everything is playing the way it should so in this case I'll go ahead and maximize and I will turn audio back on so this is the entire third cutscene played in its entirety or second Oops, what did I break? Oh, let me fix that first. Forgot, I copied the script over, forgot to rename it. Three, two, one. Alright, here we go. Last piece of equipment is now on board, sir. Terrific. Good riddance to that whole planet. And the Tribble's back as well. What? 
It's back. No. Yes. No! Lock the ship down! Sir, it's just a triple. Do it! Security, go floor to floor until you find and vaporize that mangy furball! Cool. Found one mistake. Uh, I forgot. So if the triple is coming back on, that means the planet has already pretty much been toasted in lava. So I need to change the, the planet to the barbecued one. So let me turn off the jungle scene and turn the uh, bridge scene back on like so. All right. We just need to switch this bad boy out if it let me select. I don't know why it does that sometimes. We just will not let you get it stuff. All right, so that's that one. We want the core two in lava. <laughs> like so. And then what I'll do is I'll just borrow his settings. Go copy. Paste. And it's default negative 10 10 like so turn that one off borrow is turning speed there we go all right and i'll just play this one i just want to make sure it's turning in the background like it should the last piece of equipment is now on board sir terrific don't care about the audio Yep. All right. I think I want to because I have it in the fourth and or the the third cutscene. I want to put it in the same position. So copy that. Come back over here. No, nope, no, that's not gonna do it. Okay, I'll just drag it down in here. Arbitrary. Yep. So I just want to convey the fact that, yeah, you got off the planet just in time, right? You look at that and you kind of go, yeah, that's not a good place to be at the moment. So the idea is the triple climbed through the jungle, got to the top of the trees, climbed on the last bit of stuff getting beamed back onto the ship got the last rowboat off the the sinking ship basically cool all right let me put this back to the way it was which means bridge scene gets tucked away jungle scene gets turned on let me play it make sure no errors pop up and if so i'll stop it yep we're good cool i will control s that puppy all right I think we're good. Like I said, I completely misjudged the uh, the time it take to do that. Part of it, I think, was because I, I was screwing it up, and part of it is because I was running my mouth too much about movies. Because hey, they're movies, right? Who doesn't want to talk about movies? I'm actually watching a uh, push on Amazon right now from a million years ago. Um, it's been sitting on my watch list for a million years, but I just realized that it's getting yanked off in nine days. <laughs> don't apologize man i enjoy the conversation come on i'm sitting in front of the computer all day right just sitting here me myself and i and penny to give me grief in here so uh yeah i enjoy the, the conversation for sure but yeah so i'm watching uh push was directed by the same guy that directed uh lucky number 11 and it's a weird movie i mean it's it, it's, it's something off about it you you have uh, captain america before captain america right and it just the the it's something about the delivery, right? And just the way the, the audio is recorded that makes the entire movie look like it's done as a like a, a low-budget indie movie or something, which is a weird thing. Can't quite define it. It's, I mean, even when they, they do like uh, the ADR, right, and the conversations, it just it feels like the audio doesn't blend, you know. But interesting ideas. Uh, it didn't do well. Uh, it, it got moderately bad reviews, but it's kind of interesting because it's sort of like a superhero movie before we were back in the throes of the superhero movies, right? But anyways, there you go. Off on a tangent again. 
Uh, I'll wrap it up there, guys. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Uh, Killer Tofu, thank you so much for the conversation. Good luck uh, with continuing the VR stuff. I hope you do. Uh, Lucini, I think he's out there somewhere uh, saving his buddy from making bad gaming decisions while letting me make all that I want, I guess. So he's not going to save me from my own stupidity, but oh well. Um, but yeah, that'll do it for today. I'm going to go ahead and bow out. Thank you, Killer Tofu. You as well. Uh, and of course, it is the time that anyone that's here is actually waiting for, for me to shut up and for Penny to do her cameo. What do you think? Wait, uh oh, I don't see a shadow under the door. She was there earlier, but maybe she got fed up. Let's see. Let's find out. Uh oh. She missed her cue. Did she get distracted? Penny! Uh oh. Like Dino. No! Oh! <laughs> yep. Oh, you just, you just head butted the microphone. Did that hurt? I'm not asking you, I'm asking the microphone. Because I'm sure you're fine. Jeez. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think the microphone will live. All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. I will be back on Wednesday. Let me do it my uh, Nuccini. <laughs> I said for a Nissan. <laughs> yeah, you weren't here to stall me, man. You blew it. There you go. I finished one of the cutscenes. I'll, I'll finish the other one uh, off on my own. And so that hopefully means on Wednesday I'll be back to actually work on animation again for the fourth and final cutscene. Making some headway, finally. But, uh... <laughs> Yo, jeez. <laughs> that's, that's not a good thing to do, man. I'm glad you caught it before you, you toasted the place. <laughs> Your cooking pot is probably done. Probably. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out, Lucini. Glad you made it back just in time to say adios. But uh, I'll be back on Wednesday, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10 p.m. GMT, uh, what that, whatever that is for you. Thanks so much for hanging out, and I will see you guys in just a couple ga a couple days. All right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, Lucini. I'm going to go play with Penny in the backyard. Until then, you guys take care. Adios.